The story of the Navigators begins in the 1920s with a young man named Dawson Trotman swimming across a lake in Southern California at night with a girl. Dawson realized they weren't going to make it and they began to go under the water. And under the water, Dawson breathed a prayer, God, get me out of this and I'll do whatever you want. Just then a boat came by and picked them up that they hadn't seen to that point. A month later, Dawson forgot his vow to God. He was picked up by a police officer for drunkenness. But the police officer took him to a park and said, Son, do you like this life? And Dawson said, Sir, I hate it. That was on a Friday night. The following Sunday night, he left the pool hall and went to the nearest church where the young people were having a contest. Dawson joined one of the teams and was given 10 verses of scripture to write out and memorize. He charged in with energy, took the verses home, wrote them all out, came back the next week, and he was the only one that had memorized all 10 verses. And he said he did it just to save some money because the losing team had to buy the food the following week. But one of those verses began to work on Dawson's mind and heart. John 5, 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. That phrase, has everlasting life, Dawson couldn't get it out of his mind. So he said, Lord, whatever it means to have everlasting life, to believe in you, I want to do that right now. And he marks that as his conversion. Soon Dawson started working with sailors in the U.S. fleet off Long Beach. But often when new believers came to Christ, they would lose their religion when they were out at sea. So Dawson had some scripture memory cards printed up so the sailors could memorize these cards and meditate on them while they were deployed. People have asked, why are the cards this exact size? Well, it's because they fit perfectly into the cigarette pocket of the uniform. Dawson had a great heart for evangelism. Winning souls was what it was all about. One day in Southern California, driving down a hot, dusty road, he picked up a hitchhiker. The hitchhiker got into the car with a curse. He said, Jesus Christ, it's hard to get a ride today. That broke Dawson's heart like it breaks ours. So he pulled the car over the side of the road and said, here lad, read this. And within an hour had led that young man to faith in Christ. A year later, he's driving down the same hot, dusty road, sees a hitchhiker, picks him up. Hitchhiker gets into the car and curses in the same way. Jesus Christ, it's hard to get a ride today. And then they recognized one another. The young man said, don't I know you? And it was the same kid he'd picked up a year before. Well, this was a shock to Dawson and the early navigators because they'd been emphasizing soul winning and thought that people would go on to maturity in Christ. So Dawson introduced the idea of follow-up, not only to the navigators, but to the Christian culture as a whole. Today, we might call it personal mentoring or discipling, but Dawson called it follow-up, and it began in those early days. In the late 1940s, Billy Graham came to Dawson Trotman three times and asked for help with the Crusades. Graham said that many people were coming forward to receive Christ, but he was not even sleeping nights because he was worried about the follow-up of what would happen with these converts. Dawson said, you'll have to get somebody else. Graham took, who's six foot four, took Trotman, who's five foot six, by the shoulders and said, who else? Who's been majoring in this? And it was true, Trotman had been majoring in it. So for several years, Navigator staff were loaned to the Billy Graham organization to help with the follow-up on the Crusades. And where did they start? They started with these same assurance memory cards that Dawson had taught the sailors many years before. When World War II ended, the sailors went back to neighborhoods, churches, Bible schools, seminaries, colleges, all across America. And in 1953, the navigators moved from California to Colorado Springs, where they bought Glenary. Dawson Trotman died in 1956 at Scroon Lake, New York. It was a boating accident. He and another woman were thrown out of a boat when it hit a wave, and as the boat came and circled back, Dawson pushed the woman up, and he went under the water. Dawson Trotman's spiritual journey ended the way it began, under the water. We talk about Dawson today because of the values and the ideas that he taught us. Follow-up, discipling, spiritual mentoring, the wheel illustration, the hand illustration, the bridge illustration, we still use them today. But most of all, Dawson taught us about spiritual reproduction. Today we'd call it generations. One person helping another find Christ who can help another who can help another. That distinguishes the navigators.